Did Jesus ever sell anything from the kingdom of God? No. Not even the blood of Jesus Christ can be bought with money or things. Good evening, body of Christ, and the body of Christ says, Amen. Amen. I thought Marius was going to sing Hallelujah tonight. When I said body of Christ, Amen. Very welcome to the body of Christ. We are in Acts 19 tonight. We will follow Paul. Mm, as he wishes to go to Rome. Let us pray. We thank you, Father, for this beautiful day, Lord. We thank you for another day of your favor, your blessing to be able to be here, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you protect this church and that you keep us standing day by day. We thank you, Lord, for all the intercessors, the warriors, the prophets, the pastors out there that are keeping this church in their prayers, carrying us from places that we cannot even imagine, Lord, because they can see, they can see what you are doing here, Lord, is good. It is good and it is your perfect will. Lord, let tonight's Bible study be your perfect will. Let every heart be ready to receive the word of the Lord and let it be seed that fall on good ground. Thank you, Lord, that you will water it through the week, that you will make it grow, that you will teach them and lead them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we left Paul in Acts 19, going in a different direction, stopping at Antioch. And then Apollo comes on the scene. We meet Apollo. Apollo is a Jewish man with a Greek name. We spoke a bit of where it came from, the the God they served, Apollo, the dead God, the false God. And he preaches well. He's not scared of the Jewish people. He, the word says that he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly, showing from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. So Apollo is a good worker. He is a good disciple, but Apollo only had half the word. He had John the Baptist. He's got his word, the preparation to Jesus Christ, the preparation for the Messiah. But he did not know that Jesus came, died, and got back up. He didn't have the fullness of the word. But Aquila and Priscilla was there to teach him. <laughs> so from now on, Apollo can go forth preaching the word. Now, we're going to hear from him again because Paul will speak about him again. It's a strange time we live in because Apollo and Paul never had any issues with each other. The disciples had Little, you know, little issues. We, we read about it previously where there was this little disputes about the circumcision, things like that. There's that, But Apollo and Paul is bringing the same gospel now. So there won't be any issues. Why? Because the ministries of the Lord should not be in competition with each other ever. They should complement each other. They should stand together, work together towards one goal, Jesus Christ. 
the kingdom of God, never against each other, always carrying each other. The word says carry each other's burdens, stand with each other, stand as one. We don't have to fight other ministries. If they are in the word of the Lord, we do not fight them. If they're not, we speak up boldly. Because if no one, if everyone was too scared to tell Apollo that he's got only half the message, what then? He would have went forth and preached half a message to everyone and, well, eventually the disciples and Apollo would have had a little problem. But now he's on the right track, so don't be afraid. I know some of you young people have tried <laughs> to correct uh, our preachers did not work out for you because not everyone is teachable. The Lord wants us to be teachable, which means if you do something wrong or you have something wrong, like Apollo did, yeah, it's something wrong. He immediately understood, oops, okay, I had this wrong, I can fix it, and he did. It doesn't have to be a competition. Nothing has to be a competition. Okay, verse 1, Acts 19, verse 1. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Stop there for a second. What do we remember about Ephesus? Ephesus had a lot of Greek and Roman gods. A lot of temples there. There was a lot of idol worship. There was a lot of different philosophers. There was all this different type of religion going on there. There were very religious people, as Paul called the Corinthians. No? The Corinthians. Very religious people. Ephesus is known for one specific temple. It is the guardian, it, Ephesus was the guardian of the temple of Artemis, Artemis, or Diana. Artemis is the Greek name, Diana is the Roman name. Now, what was she all about? And believe me, where there is idol worship, demons will answer to it. <laughs> they will. So, she was the goddess of the hunt, the protector of young girls, and also motherhood. I wanted to show you a picture. I'm not going to. If you want to see what she looks like, go. Um, it's, not, it's not for church uh, or Bible study. It was an interesting image. You can Google it. Okay what she looked like. So when young girls got married, they offered a lock of their hair and their maiden's garments to Diana. Went into the temple, brought their hair and stuff as a sacrifice. Because they believed she was this motherhood. She would bless them with fertility and stuff like that. Now, interesting thing about this specific, one of these specific statues that was worshipped in Ephesus is now in the Vatican. The statue is there for everyone to see. If you ever think that Catholic people believe in the same things we do, they do not. Please, they do not. Would we bring any false god or idol into our church? Even if it's a historic piece, no thank you. The Lord clearly said you will not bow your knees to anything man-made. It is a man-made statue. We will definitely not want it in our homes. Definitely not. But Paul, of course, makes this 
is home base. Now, why haven't they ever heard that there was a Holy Spirit? Paul comes back and now finds believers there. What does that mean? Apollos converted some of them to be believers. But these were the believers that only heard the gospel of John. What was the gospel of John? Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. In whose name? In God's name. Not Jesus' name, not the Holy Spirit's name. Why? Because Jesus was still walking the earth. He was not risen as the Christ yet. Apollos simply did not know that the Messiah they were getting ready for, John was getting ready for, was already here. He did not know. Verse 3. Then he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, in John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him, who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them and the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. So these converts of Apollo were still looking forward to the Messiah. Paul now tells them the Messiah has come. Aquila and Priscilla helped Apollos with that. And they were rebaptized. Now, we don't like to do that, do we? <coughs> because we understand the baptism. What happens in the baptism? We die. This person, you still see the outside shell. But let me tell you, inside there was a rebirth. There were people who would say, oh yeah, I know her from this age or since childhood. No, they don't really know me because I have been reborn. I have been dead and I got out of the water alive and new. All of us has been through that. So they don't quite understand the Godhead. And that was a really hard thing for them to understand. And guess what? It still is. For the Muslim people and the Jewish people, the Godhead, the three in one Christ, I want to say, we call it the Trinity, but that's not really in the Bible, the word Trinity. The three in one God. They did not quite understand that. You have to understand the Gospels before you can understand that Jesus came from heaven, became flesh, and is still God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one person, the Godhead. It's sometimes hard for people to understand. So they probably had to, this had to be explained to them. Now there's no, uh, no power without the Holy Spirit. No power. You can try getting baptized in just one name, in the name of God. But if you don't believe in the Son, why would you get Baptized. For the repentance of sins. Yes, that's what John taught. But now we get baptized in the Father for the repentance of sins. To say we are sinners. Yes, Lord. You said we must die for our sin. So thank you for making it so easy through Jesus Christ who already died. So we can just go through the baptism. And thank you. Holy Spirit, for now filling the gap. So as we give up our spirit, our free will, our, our own little self, you will come full that place. The Spirit of God himself now dwells inside of us. And there is power. Because in yourself, there is none. 
Nun, I tell you. Verse 8. And he went into the synagogue, there he goes again, and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. Now, was Paul welcome in that uh, synagogue? He's in Ephesus. Yeah. Remember, he spoke there already. And they said, please come back and speak to us on this some more. They wanted to know more, but he said, no, I can't stay. I have to go to Jerusalem. And he went into that vow of the Nazarene, went to Jerusalem. So, yes, they wanted him back. So he walked back boldly, he went back to the synagogue to speak to them. They were actually waiting on him. So this time he's been doing it for three months. Verse 9. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. Same thing is happening in all when I read that just now, that when their hearts hardened. There's one place in the Bible where I like to go look at how does a heart turn to stone? The Lord says, I will take out your heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh. What does that mean? I will give you a love for my children. I will give you a love for me. The heart of stone has to go. It can't stay. Not with Jesus. We have to have a, a humble heart towards others, towards the Lord, always. But only the Lord can... Give me an example. Where's a hardened heart? Where do you think I go to look at that in the Bible? In Egypt. Remember when Moses went to the Pharaoh and said, let, the Lord says, let my people go. Continuously, you can go have a look. His heart hardened every time. Every time. He would say, mm, okay, I'll, mm, I'll maybe think about it, but then go back to, what is that? That's, that's pride. Because Pharaoh believed he was a god. He didn't want another god. He was one according to him. And he will die. They all died. None of them lives. So how is it possible that these people's hearts were hardened? Easy. Because of pride. Because of religion. If you want to see a heart. I'm struggling with the English between heart and heart. I'm just going to do this when I speak about heart tonight. Art is pride and religion. Religion can turn you that way. We do not follow religion. We follow Jesus Christ as his sheep. We follow the shepherd. Thank you. No religion for us. If we were religious, then we probably have a bunch of statues to pray for. But we don't do that. Mm -hmm. And we don't look down on people and we don't want to do that we want to believe that this church is a church for the sick it must be a place for the sick to come to get well listen to me not to stay sick forever please i thought i'm going to church because i'm sick and i'm going to stay sick forever no you're not there's a time where jesus has to break the chain so you can get out praise the lord mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he went to the school of Tyrannus. Now, this is exactly how it sounds. The word tyrant comes from this name. Now, was this actually the guy's name? Don't know. 
Or was he just this kind of teacher? Have you ever thought, oh, that teacher of mine is such a tyrant? Yeah, possibly. The school of, of Tyrannus. It was not a religious place. It was a place of study. It was like a teacher opening a classroom or a school for him to preach at. So the area of Ephesus was hot. What made Paul so effective there? There is certain areas in the world, and I've actually been to one of those areas before, that they start work real early in the morning. But because it's so hot in the middle of the day, in the heat of the day, if you like, they start work real early, work until 11 o'clock, and then go on a really long lunch. Because it's too hot to keep working. I'm thinking about you, imagine, overall, in that heat. You'll pass out. And then they'll take a break from about 11 to about 4 o'clock in the afternoon and then go back to work. So there was a nice little space in Ephesus for Paul to reach people. Where did, what did they do in that time? Well, they went to schools. They went to philosophy, places where, where they philosophized. No, I'm making up words. <laughs> think. They think. <laughs> now I'm making up another word. <laughs> drink, drink. <laughs> think, think. No. <laughs> oh, my English. No. New better days. <laughs> they went to think about things. They they did other things in that time. So it was a perfect spot for Paul to go to this school and the word of mouth would have spread. Listen, come listen to this teacher. Come listen to this way. Remember, there was nothing as Christianity. It was called the way. Come listen to this man speak about the way. And why were the Gentiles more open than the Jews? Because there's so many gods already. Remember Paul said, you know what, I'm, I'm preaching the unknown God to you. Because since you're serving him as well, you don't even know what he is or who he is. That's what I'm preaching to you. So now, it's not like there was TV. There was nothing else to keep yourself busy with. So you went to listen to people speak. Or sit with the thinkers, the philosophers. So the, this was a nice place for the gospel to spread through that area. I told you it was an educational institute. I say verse 10. And this continued for two years, so that all who dwelled in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. You see, this region Paul is in is called Asia or Asia Minor. I, I'm sure you read that before, about Asia Minor. That is Ephesus. That is the region Ephesus and around Ephesus. Now, the church... Of the Colossians will also start, you know, the book of Colossi the Colossians, right? Will also start from this place, though Paul didn't go to start the church of the Colossians. The people that heard him and were discipled and in Ephesus went and started the church. His ministry was effective. He took the Lord Jesus to, th this was... Uh, it's like a beautiful little town that just the gospel is spreading out. It's echoing through the region. It's a beautiful thought. May this church and the gospel of Jesus Christ echo through the, not only the Vol Triangle, through Gauteng and Free State, since we're on the border. Mm -hmm. And the Free State. May it echo. Verse 11. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them and the evil spirits 
went out of them. Interesting. What did Jesus do? Can you remember? Jesus sometimes went to the place where there was healing needed. Or sometimes, like with the centurion, he said, Go, your servant will be healed. Done. Jesus doesn't have to physically be there to make the healing happen. That's Jesus for you. In Paul's case, first of all, you have to note that verse 11 starts with, Now God worked, not Paul worked. We spoke about this and we're speaking about it again and I'll keep speaking about it. When it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, it is God's gift. It belongs to Him. We have access to those gifts through our relationship with Jesus Christ. If your relationship takes a stumble, oh, you will feel the gifts take a stumble. You will. If you do not sit with the Lord, and I'm not meaning like we're sitting with the Lord now. I'm speaking about your quiet own relationship with the Lord. Who's part of that? Just you and Jesus. Just you and Jesus. Not you, Jesus, and well, in my case, it's four dogs, but they don't care. And I can still speak to the Lord freely. No one else, just you and the Lord building a relationship, having a chat. Because yes, children of the Lord, please don't listen to people that say, oh, how do you hear the voice of the Lord? We all do. If you have received the Holy Spirit, He is within you. How is it? Are you ignoring Him? You're, you probably are. If you're saying, I can't hear the word of the Lord, and I've received the, the Holy Spirit, and I can't hear the Rima, Rima, Rima word of the Lord, then you're probably just not listening. And you're not spending time with him alone. You'll never hear him if you do not spend time with him alone. And he wants you to spend that time with him. He longs for you to spend that time with him. He doesn't need you. He wants you to spend time with him because you are his. He wants to discuss things with you. He doesn't say a lot. Sometimes he speaks a lot. Sometimes he just has a word. And it's good. Sometimes he uses someone else to send the word through prophets. Sometimes he speaks through his written word. Because if it's in here, you can pray and pray and pray until you're blue in your face. And I say, Lord, I don't understand why you're not answering. <laughs> because you're not reading my written, my logos word. I already gave you all your answers. If it's anything else, he just wants to have your company. Even if you had a bad day or a good day, he just wants you to share with him. Does he know what happened today? Yes, completely. He even knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But he wants you to take it to him. He wants you to have that relationship, that personal, intimate relationship with him. So, Paul, through Paul's hand, God let these miracles. Now, listen, please, children of the Lord. Paul did bless objects and send it out to heal. But we live in the beautiful, beautiful country of South Africa. And you cannot be fooled and deceived. Okay. Does it state that Paul sold these objects. No. No, he did not. I don't know who, who is seeing this, but even in the paper, I don't know if it's still like that. I stopped looking at it, watching the news, and I stopped buying the papers a long time ago. But in the paper, if you open certain areas, there's healing ministries, and you have to pay this much for a lost love, and you have to pay. Did Jesus ever 
sell anything from the kingdom of God. No. Not even the blood of Jesus Christ can be bought with money or things. Do you think the Lord needs something from you? No. He doesn't. He's perfect in all of his ways. He doesn't need anything from you. If he asks you to give something up, give it. It's good for you. Give it up. Especially if it's bad for you. He might ask you to give it up. Like fasting, which we will do. Now we've got this little problem because the devil mimics the Lord. And the African churches likes to sell blessed objects. Paul never sold healing. It is the saddest thing when someone calls me and says, listen, I have a demonic problem in my house or I have a demonic problem. The next thing they ask me is, how much do you charge? And that upsets me. Not because they're asking. It upsets me because someone else already tried to sell them something. I did not pay, and you did not pay, for the gifts of the Spirit. The day we started speaking in tongues, the Lord did not say, give me, give me a thousand rand and you can speak in your tongue. He did not want anything from us. It was a gift. It's a gift. So what do we do with a gift? We share freely. Freely! Openly, boldly, because we cannot keep these treasures the Lord put inside of us, poured into us with the Holy Spirit to ourselves. It wasn't given to ourselves. It was given to the church. Nothing is really yours. <laughs> Nothing. It belongs to God first, and then he gives us those gifts to share with the church. So if there's a prophetic word, it's for the church. If there's a word of knowledge, it's for the church. Ah, That's what makes worship so beautiful. It's for the Lord from the church. <laughs> it's beautiful. It belongs to him. So can the Lord bless objects and send it out through someone's <laughs> hands? Yes, he can. Will he sell it? No. So you can know if someone tries to sell you something, and I've seen some weird stuff being sold. I saw ice cubes being sold. Yeah, truly. In the name of the Lord. It was like, I think it was in Zimbabwe, because it was in dollars. And it cost a ridiculous amount of Zimbabwean dollars to buy these ice cubes, because the church name was something like, the wealthy in Christ, and it wasn't for the poor. I don't know what was happening. It was horrible what happened there. And this woman that calls herself a prophet, remember what, what the Lord says about Jezebel? He said, that woman that calls herself a prophet, that's, that's what that is. And she would sell these ice cubes, and you have to put them next to your bed, and as they melt during the night, all your problems will melt away. But it's co <laughs> so silly. <laughs> but the fact is, yeah, we're laughing, but a lot of people bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. They're selling rings, blessed objects. Those are objects of witchcraft. Don't buy it. If you don't understand the Lord Jesus Christ, go back to Matthew, work yourself way to, uh, through to John. How did the ministries operate? Yes, on tithes. Still, ministries operate on tithes. But if I start selling you a bunch of junk, telling you, we well, you have to give me a hundred rand and I'll give you an ice cube and then all your worries will melt away. I'm lying. I am probably a witch. And you're going to go home with much more than an ice cube. Much more. Going to attach a little demon on there to send home to you. Don't buy that stuff. Doesn't matter 
how bad things look in your life. Okay, the Lord can fix anything. And the best, the best of it is he can fix it because he loves you. He will fix it because he loves you. You cannot buy his love. It's not for sale. Thank the Lord. Please don't be fooled. Please don't buy stuff from witches. Even if they call themselves apostles and prophets. Because they, oh, they love titles. Remember Jezebel too. She loves titles. Just remember that. Verse 13. Now there's, oh. I want to say it's one of my favorite parts, pieces in the Bible. But you know I'm lying because it's all. I love the word of the Lord completely. Then, let me just get my pronunciation right. Then some of them, itinerant, yeah, Jewish exorcists, took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus Christ over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. I can see everyone smiling, so it will be your, one of your favorite pieces too, parts of the Bible too. What happened? You see, we are in Ephesus with a lot of idol worship, a lot of occultism, philosophy. The thinkers live there, which was quite lazy per people. If you actually, they just thought all day long about interesting things to say and everyone will follow them. There was a lot of devil, demons. Can you imagine a cesspool of demons? Because of all the idolatry, all the practices, we talked about, the Lord said, you are not allowed to eat stuff that was offered to idols. There were special shops that they would remove the temple offerings and sell it. So you can buy it the next day. I wouldn't, but they did. Probably special price because it comes with fly eggs. But that is how it worked. So there was a lot of demons there. Of course there was. Now, they call these people the sons of Sceva, a priest, a Jewish priest. Now, first of all, there is no mention in the history books of a priest named Sceva. So this was a self-proclaimed priest or a priest not of God. He might have been Jewish, and he might have been a priest, but not a priest of the Lord. So he had seven sons. Now, what does the seven sons mean? It could be that he had seven children, seven sons, or it could have been disciples. Remember the one that called himself Bar-Jesus, son of Jesus? He was a liar and a sorcerer. Then we had Simon, who tried to buy the gifts from the disciples, also a sorcerer. And now we have the seven sons of Sceva. <clears throat> now, let's go back and look at what Jesus did. Jesus said, was it that the Jewish people did not handle demons? No, they did. They do have certain ways to get rid of demons. I'm not sure if they can keep them out, though. Because how do you keep a demon out without the Holy Spirit? We've learned that. Jesus said, if you drive out the unclean spirit, he sends them to desert places. And then if they come back, they're going to test the house. And the house is all clean and tidy and empty. 
they moved back in, bringing seven within themselves back. So if the Holy Spirit is not in you to protect you, you're open target. I have to go do some research on this, how the Jewish people did this. I'll do it. I'll bring it to you one day. Because I actually, I have a problem not knowing things. I love new information, especially about the Bible. When Jesus cast out demons, they told him, you do this. He does this by the power of Beelzebub. Who the devil? And Jesus said what? He said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Because do, demons do not fight against each other. They have no reason to do that. They've got no moral sense or compass at all. They've got no goodness in them. They're without the Lord, outside of his light. But they don't work against each other. That's beyond the point. Why would you? They would rather go stay in one man, like that man called, that, that Jesus said, what is your name? And he said, Legion, 6,000, which means 6,000 demons can live in one man. The, was that man crazy? Yes, absolutely, he was crazy. He was running naked through the tombstones. But they were living together in demonic harmony, as whatever demonic harmony would be. But they don't work against each other. And when Jesus said that, he said, by whom do your sons cast them out? He spoke to the Pharisees. So yes, they had a way, an exorcism of dealing with demons in the name of God. Of course, the only authority is the king of all kings, Jesus Christ. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, whose tongues, everything on earth, everything in heaven and everything down there. Everyone will confess that Jesus is the Lord. Because they know him and they actually said it. They said, we know Jesus because they do. They do. The earth shook when Jesus took that cross. They knew when he went to descend and get the keys from Hades and say, oh, oh, you don't have the power of death anymore. I'm taking it from you. They know Jesus. Definitely. And then they say, and we know Paul. Does the kingdom of darkness know your name? If you say no, Aish. then you're no threat to them. Then you're not really doing anything for Jesus. Not at all. Because if you are working for the kingdom of light, the king of all kings, we are in this world. Remember, we are not from this world. We are lights in the darkness. We are the salt of the earth, Jesus said. Those that follow him, he knows us by name and we know his voice. If you're in the world, the enemy doesn't bother with you because what? What are you going to do to him? But when the children of God open their eyes in the morning, he goes, they're awake. Because we can do some damage. We can divide and conquer. We've got all the tools. The Holy Spirit gave us the full armor of the Lord to fight back and to fight them out of other people's lives. So we are a threat to them. And I have actually seen, and the first time that happened, I was startled. I was very startled. <laughs> We're joking about this. this weird shows on TV. Something really big happens and then I go, I was very startled. I would have been much more than startled, but okay. Because I found out that there were demons that actually knew my name and they were speaking through people that I have never met. And they were calling me out. And in the beginning, the Lord has to <laughs> stroke my ear a bit and say, it's okay, child. It's okay that they know your name. 
because you're doing damage to their kingdom. It's okay. Go now. Fight on. L let's do this. The Lord is with you always. Do they know your name and why? Or do they know your name because you're playing their games? Because they also know the witches' names that they make deals with. They also know the Buddhists and the Hinduists and all the religious people. They know them. They're no threat to them. They don't bother with them that much. But they do know the disciples of Jesus Christ. They know our names. Oh, I'm sure you all know. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Are we scared of them? No. Should these people have been scared of them? Yes. Because guess what? Without the Holy Spirit, you have no authority. No authority. Without the blood of Jesus Christ covering you from head to toe, you've got no authority against them. None whatsoever. What happened to these guys? They were running down the street naked. All bruised up. Because they had been... But they used the name of Jesus. Yeah, but do they know Jesus? No. It's about relationship. It's not about just the name. Go listen out there. How many people uses the name of Jesus just as a curse word? Sometimes I would look at them and think, mm -hmm, lightning would probably struck you one of these days. That's really nasty. We have to pray for our enemies. <clears throat> we'll pray for them later. And I would say, oh, forgive them, Father. They do not know what they do. The mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ is so powerful to his children that we will not even think about using his name in vain. And if someone else does, it feels like you, it feels like everything inside of you shrivels up, like you're dehydrating. Because why would you use my Lord's name like that? Why? I know him personally. He is good in all of his ways. He does nothing bad. He doesn't even send people to hell as they think. They do it themselves. And this is a nice way to do it by using his name in vain. So why doesn't they use any other God's name like they use his? Do you ever hear people say, Oh, Allah. Swear at the name of Allah. Swear at one of the, there's so many false gods out there, Buddhas or whatever. Swear at their names. Why is it only the name of Jesus Christ that gets used like that? And God's name, excuse me, that's a lot nowadays. Why is it only their names, his name, in whatever form? Why is it not any other God? Ever thought about that? You see, because the enemy will go for the living God, not the dead idols. He doesn't care about them. And he does it to provoke us. Remember when Paul said, when the, Luke said, and Paul's spirit was provoked by all the idolatry. That is what it feels like. We get provoked. But the enemy knows that. I wanted to say, let's not give the enemy ideas, but he already knows that. <laughs> he does. That's why he does it. Stop using the Lord's name in vain. It's disgusting. So these demons, you can try to go against the demon, and I know other religions <laughs> tries. And let me tell you, people die. They use the name of Jesus, but they also use other names. 
<coughs> They'll bring in Mary. I mean, she's got nothing to do with nothing. But they throw in a little Mary worship. Nullifying the name of Jesus Christ immediately because you can only have one master. You remember what Jesus said. You cannot have two masters because you will hate the one, the one of them and love the other one. So you cannot serve money, mammon, and God at the same time. And just like that, Jesus never told us to bring his mother into anything. He loved his mother. But he never told us to pray for her. He never taught us to pray for her. He never told us that she is the mediator between. So if you throw them in, demons will not listen to you. Why would they? You've got more than one God. So at the end of the day, it takes them sometimes years to perform what they call an exorcism. Hurts the people. And sometimes that thing turns around and hurts them. And it has full right to do so. Because if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, do not poke at demons. Stay away. They are evil. Evil doesn't describe what they are. We're doing a series about that. Watch the... YouTube channel for the sermons. Okay, so they got chased in the, out in the street naked, which I thought, <laughs> oops, ne? Oops. You go. <laughs> Verse 17. This became known. I would think it was known after a couple of guys ran, seven guys just ran naked in the street, all bruised, demon behind them. Yeah, I would know that. <laughs> I think the whole town would know that. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus Christ was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced practiced magic, brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. Listen, can you, can you just get a kind of a visual here? 50,000 pieces of silver. <laughs> that is the cost of all those witchcraft books put together. Witchcraft, philosophies, anything with the occult. They all brought it together in fear of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Why? Because the wisdom, wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. Why do we love him? We love him deeply. Deeply because he is good, but we also fear him because there's no one and nothing else like him. He created the universe by speaking. The sun you see is not the biggest sun in the universe. That is a star. And the word says, our God did this. He breathed out the stars. Why you want to mess with him? I don't. So yes, we fear him. Yes, we fear him. And I know of a lot of people, when they come to know Jesus Christ, they bring all the witchcraft stuff and burn it. They burn it. All the crystals, all the astrology, all the tarot cards, all the things of divination, all the scrolling mirrors, they burn it because of the fear of the Lord, because they will be judged. It's not worth it. And after you've seen such, uh, remember, who do they do business with? All these with tarot cards and stuff like that. Who do they do business with? Not the Lord. The Lord wants nothing to do with it. It's not his. 
he'll just turn his face from it. Because in the Old Testament, you can go read, he says, suffer not a witch to live. Kill them immediately. So if you are doing witchcraft, of course the Lord can forgive you. No problem. He can forgive you. But it better not be a continuous thing. You can't say, Father, forgive me, and then do it again tomorrow. Out of fear of the Lord, you distance yourself from all witchcraft. Do complete distance. Why would you still mess with things like that? These people just saw seven guys running naked in the street. <laughs> because a demon, well, did not respect them that much. And that is the things that they make deals with. When the Lord our God is omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, the all-powerful one, sovereign above all, why do I want to make a deal with a demon? If I've got Jesus Christ on my side, why? It's like these people with their guardian angels. Oh my goodness, why would you want an angel if you can have the living God's spirit inside of you to protect you? You've got a real twisted idea of power. You have no idea what power is. No idea. thing about demons, the Lord is omnipresent, which means he is in yesterday, today, tomorrow, and everywhere at once. Demons are not. They skin a lot. They do speak amongst each other. I have seen some interesting things. You'll come from dealing with a demon and go to someone else that doesn't even know those people, and that person will know what happened there. Because they do speak to each other, but they're not everywhere at once. They're not that powerful. But the Lord is. We've got the spirit that's so much more powerful. We've got the blood of Jesus Christ that trumps all in any way. So the word, let's go to verse 20. Let's just finish this little bit here. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed, of course it did. When these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in his spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. Okay, I'm going to make a little mark. Make a mark at verse 21. We'll go into it next week. 21 or 22? 21. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. The word says that the word of the Lord cannot return to us void. What does that mean? Whether, whenever I speak the word of the Lord, it goes out to accomplish something. Sometimes it is a good accomplishment. Sometimes it just reveals something evil. But it never returns void. If you ever say, yeah, but I... I spoke about Jesus to those people. I did. I spoke about the gospel. I told them about Jesus, the perfect lamb that died and has risen. I told them, but it, it was like the word just returned void. No, it didn't. It just exposed unbelievers. Think about it. It didn't. That same word you speak to those people that will not accept it, the moment you take the dust off your feet, that will be a judgment against them. The Lord knows. So if they one day die, they will die. Everyone dies. <laughs> when they die, they will stand in front of the throne of the Lord. 
And the Lord said, Jesus said, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And they will say, Lord, and he will say, but I send you people to ask you about, to tell you about me. I told you about a personal relationship with me. You said, no, thank you. So I don't know you. Get away from me. And that's sad for some of us. But you know what? That should also give hope to some of us. Because whatever you do with the gospel, if it's a true spirit and truth gospel, it will plant a seed. You will know that your work on earth was not in vain. If you can save one person out of ten, you're doing well. You did a good job. Rejoice. It's getting harder. But you know, it's getting real hard to save people still. Because they all believe that they are Christians, which is like you say, why were the disciples Paul and the disciples called the way? You know, not Christians, the way. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus. So they called him the way. The word Christian was only used twice in the Bible, and it was a slang word. Little Christs. That's what the Romans called us. That's okay. They can call us whatever they like. Most people do not even know what that means, and they call themselves Christians. They live in dead churches, witchcraft churches, sell stuff to you online with magic properties. The Lord does not hand out magic. Don't be fooled. He is supernatural above all. All powerful. There's nothing he can't do. But it's not magic. It's the Lord. Let us pray. We thank you, Father, that Paul, Apollos, we thank you for every single disciple that we're learning about in the Bible, in your written word. Father, if it were not for the sacrifices they made, that they were so sold out to you, Lord, that they ran with your gospel all over the world so it could reach us by right here in South Africa, Lord, that we would be able to be part of your body, of your family. So we thank you for them, Lord. We thank you for giving them such passion, such zeal. They even died to bring the gospel to those people, Lord, and today to us. It spread all over the world, Lord, because you are everywhere. Thank you, Father, that there is nothing done in secret that will not be made known. Thank you, Father, that you already see the enemies of our church. That you have seen them, that your eyes are upon them, and we do not have to fear any witch. We do not have to fear any demon because we follow the one true shepherd, Jesus Christ. Why would we fear? Why would the earth be shaken if we are planted on that solid rock? Father, keep us standing, Lord. Even though the attacks are many, we know that you already have a way out. You already have a perfect plan. And we will rejoice and glorify you in everything. Give us thankful hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.